So, hey, guess what? This guy in a T-shirt is the leader of a country, and he's afraid to make peace with Putin because the Nazis in his country and in his government and in his military will kill him. And so now they're now doing, Ukraine is restricting Russian books, music, as a way to make a cultural break from Russia. So so they're going to... This is... You didn't write jokes for this, right, Kurt? No, I never got this one. Ukraine's parliament on Sunday voted through two laws which will place severe restrictions on Russian books and music as Kiev seeks to break many remaining cultural ties between the two countries following Moscow's invasion. If there's anything that says freedom, democracy, liberty, it's censoring books and music. <laughs> Weren't they already trying to eliminate Russian being spoken in the country before there even was this war? I think I think I might have heard that. Jackson, do you know about that? They so Russia was previously recognized as one of the two national languages, and under Petro Poroshenko, who replaced Yanukovych in a U.S. backed coup, he removed it from one of the two national, you know, identified languages. Okay, so there you but now, go. But now, they're, they're, as you're going to see, they're just banning it and saying you can't even have it on your website if you're in Ukraine. Well, one law will forbid the printing of books by Russian citizens unless they renounce their Russian passport and take Ukrainian citizenship. The ban will only apply to those who held Russian citizenship after 1991 collapse of the Soviet rule. It will also ban the commercial import of books printed in Russia, Belarus, and occupied Ukraine territory, while also requiring special permission for the import of books in Russia, in Russian, from any other country. This doesn't sound crazy, xenophobic. This doesn't sound nuts. Another law will prohibit the playing of music by post-1991 Russian citizens on media and on public transport, while also, so if it's pre-1991, you can play it? Uh, while also increasing quotas on Ukraine language, speech, and music content in TV and radio broadcasts. Ukraine's culture minister said that he was glad to welcome the new restrictions. So it hasn't been signed by Zelensky yet, but we're pretty sure he's going to. Ukraine says this process, previously referred to as decommunization, but now more often called de-Russification, is necessary to undo centuries of policies aimed at crushing Ukrainian identity. Moscow disagrees, saying Kiev's policies to entrench the Ukrainian language in day-to-day -day life oppresses Ukraine's large number of Russian speakers, whose rights it claims to be upholding in what it calls its special military operation. So there you go. Uh, they're trying to de-Russify Ukraine, and they're doing that by banning books, music, you know, the kind of stuff that you think Kim Jong-un does. Hey, but they're still good on LGBT rights. Least, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. They're not either on that. <laughs> no, they're not. They're Nazis. Um, anything you wanted to add to this? This is quite a, a predictable... I mean, Go ahead. When when Zelensky was running for office, and you've pointed this out time and time again, he literally said that we shouldn't divide our nation based on language. Uh, we should leave the Russian speakers in eastern Ukraine alone, and you know, previously in Crimea alone, whatever. Uh, and, and on top of all of that, I mean, you today still have Ukrainian soldiers that are recording themselves in. Uh, you know, in fighting positions in the Donbass that are struggling to speak Ukrainian because their first language is Russian. And they're asking their comrades at war, like, how do you how do you say 22 in Ukrainian? You know, things like that. It, they, they this is a country that is so deeply intertwined with Russia. It's incredible. And it would it, there's nothing even the equivalent of, say, doing this in the United States. Like you can't even say think about banning Spanish in the United States because so many more people in Ukraine speak Russian than people in here speak Spanish. But even that would be insane in the United States if we were to ban Spanish. Uh, maybe you can get like, uh, you know, like in Germany, they had the Berlin Wall to separate the Germans. Maybe maybe he can bring back the Berlin Wall for Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Even the Quebecois at least let you put English under the French. Ah, uh, so I don't think the people are ever going to wake up to what a scam this Ukraine war is and was. Do you think they'll ever wake up to it? Um, I mean, the majority of Americans say they don't really care about what's happening in Ukraine, but I don't think I don't know if people will ever wake up to it. No. Okay. Me neither. Hey, we're doing stand updates. Salt Lake City, Las Vegas, Chicago, Sacramento, and then San Diego, where I'm taping my new special. Go to jimmydorcomedy.com for a link for all the tickets for all our live shows. We're coming to your town, maybe. Mm-hmm.